I'm delighted that, that Paul Vogel uh, is joining us today to, to, to bring us up to date. Uh, Paul, as, as most of you know, is, is, is President and Chief Marketing Sales Officer of USPS and responsible for all uh, domestic and international product development, including pricing, placement, promotion, and the sales group. Um, fascinating that his division is responsible for 65 billion US dollars of revenue, which I suspect is a, a little bit larger than the GDP of some smaller countries around the world. Uh, Paul has a long history with USPS, coming for over about 40 years, I think, Paul, uh, including many, being Managing Director and Senior Vice President of Global Business and Vice President of Network Operations. I'm delighted to introduce Paul Vogel. Well, thank you very much, John. And um, first, my official welcome to all of you to the sunny Miami. Uh, when John asked us if we would uh, entertain bringing World Mail and Express back to Miami. He said uh, our, our attendance is always very good. A lot of people register, I should say, but not everybody shows up to the meetings. So he said if you could make sure that it rained on the first day, it would be very much appreciated. So, so we have accommodated you, Mr. Maud. It, it should clear out by, uh, by tomorrow afternoon, though, so you can all enjoy sunny Miami. So my apologies for this bad weather, but it was a special order. So. Uh, so jo John is absolutely correct that the U.S. Postal Service is going through a lot of things that a lot of companies don't like to go through. Uh, it, it's a great deal of irony that I, that I sit next to, to Wagner and uh, my presentation is very similar to his uh, because I think a lot of posts are going through what, what uh, both Brazil is going through and, and certainly I and the USPS are going through. So, so you push the button. So maybe you don't push the button. Which button you push, I wonder? Hey. <laughs> what do you do when the button doesn't push? Hey, you go, hey. <laughs> uh, very nice. <laughs> it works though. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll let you push the button. <laughs> there you go. All right, so so this is very similar to the to the slide that, that Wagner showed. Uh, the, the difference here is I, I put the total value of the U.S. Postal Service on the top of each one of these bars that is the past four years of our performance. So clearly we have gone from a $75 billion organization in uh, 2008 to a 65, almost $66 billion organization uh, last year, and our year ends at the end of September. So it's, it's a fascinating problem, and, and the reason why I took over the position I have is to try to assess what's causing that to happen and do something about it. But as you can see, the, the breakdown of these, uh, of these products that the U.S. Postal Service sells, the, the problem is not in international, the problem is not in shipping, the problem isn't in advertising mail, which we call standard mail, the problem is in first-class message business. Uh, and that problem is going to continue, and something needs to be done about that. And that, that's where I'm going to focus most of my attention in this presentation with you. Not so much the, the problems of the USPS, but, but where letter mail volume, where mail business is going. Uh, so as, as we look at not just us, but as, especially as I look at some of my friends from the European Post, clearly the Post need a different legislation. Legislation that, that uh, the country that the Post reside in will allow for their citizens, but certainly if the Post is going to survive, some type of legislative flexibility is necessary. And that's ever so, uh, so the case in the United States. Also, uh, here in the United States, many of you read our headlines about the, the issues that the U.S. Postal Service is going through. The Post needs to change. The Post needs to change its physical infrastructure. It needs to change its, its operating culture. And we are in the transition of doing that in the U.S. Postal Service. You will have many things, and I can, I can talk during the uh, question and answer about our network consolidations, the activities that many of you that represent posts have gone through with assessing your retail outlets and uh, plant and facility attributes and even the number of days that we deliver mail. All of those issues are being assessed and debated within our Congress in the United States, and it is a very healthy and dynamic conversation. And while all of that is going on, ultimately it's all about our customers. Uh, any meeting that we've ever attended to in the past 20 years would tell you the same thing. Uh, but the customers now are changing more quickly than they have ever changed before and in a way that is less predictable. Who knew that only five years ago this, uh, 
this Apple iPhone would be invented. Five years ago, five years ago last month, that device got in. So I can't tell you what the technology world is going to be five years from now, because five years ago I wouldn't have predicted what happened then either. But what I do know is there is still a very great value of mail. So I want to talk about mail. Uh, mail has different values in different parts of the world. As I, as I travel the world, I see the, the different mailing communities and how people get their messages across. So as I look at mail, obviously I look at it from a US cultural point of view. Now, what, what I have seen in mail in the United States is it still has a tremendous value. My job is to try to maintain that value and exceed the value and make it difficult for companies to want to transition from, from a traditional mail product to a digital mail product. So that's part of what I've been doing, and I'll show you some of that uh, in, in future slides. Part of what I've been doing is to enhance the value of mail and to make it difficult to make a transition. All of that going on, we also have to understand the, the culture of the people that use mail or get messages across in, in the incredible attention span that consumers have for the very varied ways to get a message across. And I'll talk about that as we go through this. So as th this is an interesting slide that, that I've used in a couple of presentations. It was developed by a target marketing uh, research group. And if you look at consumers, because mail is, is driving commerce, mail is driving uh, not just messages, so a lot of mail is all about return on investment. Now, as I look at this slide, and this in the in the upper uh, or the right, the left side, I should say, is about acquisition of customers, new customers that have never done business with with the people that are sending out the mail. And the right side is customers that were doing business with that customer and is now retained. So acquisition, getting the customer for the first time. It turns out that the, in the United States, at least, the number one way of, of finding a customer for the first time, also known as acquisition, is through using mail. 38% of the people surveyed said that they learned about a company or a service or a new product through a direct mail piece, uh, followed very closely by email uh, and all of the other uh, uh, search engine uh, activities that go on. So clearly there is a transition. Clearly people are going to digital messaging to acquire uh, new customers. But certainly mail is still a, a very large influencer on, on the commerce and economy of the United States. Uh, similarly, on retention, people that have done business with a company before, they still, those companies still see a mail piece generating a correspondence or make visible a product that keep mail vibrant and alive in wanting to stimulate the economy for those, for those businesses. However, direct mail in terms of retention is the second biggest component. It was the first biggest uh, for acquisition, it's the second biggest for retention. People like to get those reinforcing messages more frequently, and a good way to do that is through electronic uh, media such as email. Uh, ironically, we, we all spend, as, as I do also, we spend a lot of money on TV and commercials. That doesn't seem to be the way that people actually buy. It's a way that people influence, but not the way people buy. So, so when you look at the value of mail, I look at it in terms of what return on investment does it bring to the to the commercial people that are using the mail. And this, this tells a different story than what, uh, what the, the general media would tell you about the value of mail. Now also in the United States, this, this slide is a little bit difficult to read, uh, but what we try to do is, is realize, if you remember that first slide that I showed that showed about a $10 billion loss in revenue over a six, five year period, we, we tried to determine, well, who is changing? Not just why are they changing, we know why people changed, but we're trying to figure out if people were gonna continue to, to move from, from mail to some other type of correspondence, digital correspondence, and how quickly they would do that. And it became very difficult for us. I, we, I've studied posts around the world, and I know some posts have very aggressively gone into 100% digital communication, and we were entertaining the same thing. But then we took a look at, well, what, what are the, the citizens of the United States, what is their makeup, what is their disposition, and how do they like getting messages? 
And what we found is there is no one answer, that there's a lot of different personalities, there's a lot of different age groups, there's a lot of different educational backgrounds. And what, what you see on this slide is, is a stratification of the type of consumers that do messaging in the United States. So all the way up in the upper uh, left-hand column, you have what's called a traditionalist or a sentimentalist. And those are the people that just love mail. They, they appreciate uh, written books. They, they like physical activity. They, they, they would much prefer to have a, a piece of paper, a magazine, or a piece of mail than they would a digital correspondence. And then all the way down in the lower right-hand column, you have the, the digital natives, the, the early transition people, the, the technophiles that the first time a new technology comes out, they're going to be the first one to use it. So I love those sentimentalists and traditionalists. They, they're keeping the post alive in the United States. I'm not so uh, fond of those digital natives, but they are a fact of life, and more and more people are falling into that. Where the, where the debate needs to be is everybody else. You know, how quickly will the next generation of people migrate into digital communication? And that's where we're finding people that, that like mail for other reasons, like the validator that, that feels like maybe they, they need a spot in this planet to, to be recognized and a piece of mail validates their existence, as there are other ways to do that. Or the organizer or the pragmatist that, that, that needs something to put in their files to remind them that they have a bill to pay, or, or the pragmatist who, who just uh, will do whatever it takes to get the job done, but, but right now they don't trust any type of technology. So as, as we're looking at our digital strategy and at our mail strategy, it's, it's not just about the best digital platform, it's understanding your consumer base. It's understanding the culture, the people, the transition. We, we believe that we lost a lot of business to digital, and we did. And we think that they were the early adopters. And we think there's going to be a pause for a while. Now, whether that pause is months or years, we don't know. But it, we think it's going to be a while before the pragmatists and the organizers move into the digital world. So they are going to move. Inevitably, like how many years down the road they will move. But, but in the interim, my, my job is to continue to create value of mail. Now, I, this is a very, very busy chart, and you probably can't read it, but every post around the world is going through this. IPC gave me this chart, uh, and it just tries to show where we are the, the deep blue, the, the blue and the deep blue are more the traditional mail products, and the tannish colors are the less traditional mail products, the logistics or the financing. The, and some posts, like Japan Post and Post Italiana, they, they are very heavily uh, inclined towards non-traditional post services. Clearly, uh, Post, like Brasilia and, and uh, uh, Correo Brazil and Deutsche Post and U.S., are more inclined to those traditional mail products. So every Post needs to do that same assessment that I just showed you and determine where the consumers are in their country and how quickly they should adopt or not adopt into, into technology. I, any Post, I would be very cautious in saying just throw everything you got at digital because I don't think that that's always the case, and it's certainly not the case in the United States. All right, so, so here's, here's my, I'll call it short-term strategy for the, for the next year. We believe that first-class mail still is very relevant. Uh, we currently make uh, roughly 50% of all of our income through, comes through first-class mail. We think that that's going to stay that way for the foreseeable future, continuing to decline, but still it's going to be worth 30 to $35 billion of income to the U.S. Postal Service. So we, we are going to continue to, our strategy is to continue to assess the diversion and do everything possible to slow the diversion of first class mail. Simultaneously embracing technology, knowing that sooner or later everybody will switch to digital and we have to embrace and, and make platforms available for the new social media and all the new opportunities that are going to come out of digital. On marketing mail, that advertising mail, that's going to continue to grow in the United States. I, I know advertising mail is not popular in many countries in the world, but in the United States it is a very popular product. It is a way of differentiating, probably one of the biggest complaints that we have from the mailing industries that uses our advertising mail is that there's just too much messaging out in the world uh, and that it's clutter. That that people have spam filters, fi people have figured out a way to stop messaging digitally, but mail is still a very vibrant way of getting a message across. 
We also know that using marketing mail is very difficult. Uh, it's usually done in large quantities. It's done in, in a less than simple way. So we have been looking at other ways that we can create, generate, uh, and put together in a simple way, especially for small businesses, to, to gather up their abilities to do marketing mail. Most small businesses, and there's roughly five million small businesses in the United States, are not experts at, at uh, artist illustrator activity and putting together fancy pieces, and it's very expensive for them. So we are in the process of putting together strategies that will make it easier for people to generate mail and easily put it into the system also including enhancing technologies that make that piece of mail more relevant for the person that's using it, and I'll give an example of that in a minute. Uh, shipping services is absolute, just like Wagner said, uh, every post needs to be in shipping services. I'm not gonna talk much about that because Giselle Valera, uh, the Vice President of Global Business, is gonna talk about that tomorrow, so I'll be avoiding that, and clearly digital has its, its place, and we are designing ours as well. So on first-class mail, uh, what a lot of companies have told me is uh, people in America uh, don't always pay their bills. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons why they don't pay their bills, but a lot of complaints recently is that during that early transition, a lot of people got something as simple as their statements, their billing statements, electronically. And turns out that there's a less pay rate if you get your, your billing statement electronically. So a lot of companies now are at the point of saying, well, maybe that paper statement has value. Now, that, that's a tough transition, uh, but we also found out that the U.S. government puts a lot of restrictions on what can go into a paper statement, up to the size of the font on there, all of those disclosures or non-disclosures that, that are required. That statement is now up to about two pages of legal size paper and sometimes runs over a one ounce limit. So as we talked to the banking industry and a lot of the bill payment companies, they said, you know, it'd be really good if you could figure out how to get out of that ounce system you have because we're almost always up to a two ounce system. So we looked at the two ounce rule that we had. You pay the, the, the first ounce at the normal rate and a slightly less rate for the second ounce, but it got very expensive for the second ounce. And as it turned out, as we looked at our cost structure, the second ounce isn't that expensive for us to, to put through our automation equipment. Matter of fact, we got to the point where we said we could do the second ounce free. Now, that has created a little bit of uh, uh, anxiety in a lot of the mailing houses in the United States by them saying, wow, not only can we get those mailing statements in there, which will be better received by the public, but we can also put in other material into that second ounce such as the promotional letters, the other uh, uh, multimedia marketing uh, coupons, et cetera. And now all of a sudden, a first class statement is becoming a more vibrant piece of mail. So it's doing more than just a billing statement. It is cannibalizing ever so slightly some marketing mail, but it's a good thing because first class mail is so productive. So we're taking a look at first class mail in a different way. We, our overall purpose is to keep the, the value of first class mail high and the cost of first class mail low and putting as many features onto it as we possibly can, leveraging technologies, leveraging uh, linkages between the, the first class mail piece and an advertising site as is possible so that people continue to see the value of mail. We found that there is a very big battle going on in many of the, uh, the banks around the United States uh, between the chief marketing officer and the chief financial officer. The chief financial officer wants things done cheaply. The chief marketing officer wants things done with visibility and response rates. This helps the chief marketing officer make their point uh, to the chief financial officer. It gives greater value. On marketing mail, uh, we, we've the, the other thing that we have done is not only just keep the cost of marketing mail uh, very reasonable, but we've also added new features. Uh, we love to run promotions and to try to stimulate new ideas. Now, the Post traditionally does not get into marketing ventures where we not just stimulate the growth of mail volume, but we stimulate new technologies. We did something last summer that was very unconventional for us, uh, and you can probably see it on that example. We put a QR code uh, promotion in place, which gave, uh, gave senders of marketing mail the opportunity to reduce their postage costs by 3% if they put uh, something more exciting on that mail piece, like a QR code or a mobile barcode or an MS tag, or there's any number of tags that they could use. 
And the whole intent there was to make a piece of mail more exciting, make it more vibrant. So when you get that piece of mail, it's not just a stale piece of mail, but you could take your smartphone, you could run it over, and you could, it could take you in to a new place. You know, some of you may have even seen uh, one of our philatelic stamps. Uh, it, it's Oni. Oni is a, a dog, a mascot that the Postal Service had about 100 years ago. And the uh, Smithsonian uh, helped us design that stamp. So as you scan that stamp with your smartphone, the dog comes to life. It comes together with a three-dimensional uh, animization of, of the dog. So that technology is coming. That technology is here. It's a little bit expensive. But we, we at the Postal Service are saying that's what's the difference between a physical stale piece of mail and an exciting piece of mail that people want to open, people want to use, and people want to stimulate some sort of new transaction with it. So we're going to continue to work on activities that, that link the, this stale old physical world with this new exciting e-commerce world. What we found is these things are tough to buy from. Uh, they're, they're great devices. But anybody that's ever tried to buy off of these things could take a half an hour to make a transaction. Yes, you can do it much easier on a computer, but you need something to drive this device. And a piece of mail is easy to drive these devices when you link it with technologies like QR codes. So we're going to continue to do that. Ultimately, it's all about the digital platform and making, putting enhancements on pieces of mail so the technology works. So we've gone through a very large investment process over the past three years. We've completely reconverted our entire dot-com experience, including, including our mobile device experience. We get about three million hits a day off of our website. It is less commercial than I'd like to see. It's more informational, but we're in the transition period right now of making our dot-coms one of the most vibrant dot-coms in the United States. And we've uh, researched with a, a lot of both small customers, big customers, consumers, and government to fi find out what they need. So we are well on our path to that transition that I was talking about earlier. Now shipping, just one slide on shipping uh, to, to introduce uh, Giselle's presentation uh, tomorrow. We, we know that we are the best shipping opportunity in the United States. We know we have the most robust uh, network, whether it's the first mile network, all of our retail units and contract retail units, or it's our last mile delivery. So everything that we have been doing is to, pr even those downsizings and other activities that you may have heard about in the, the newspaper, does not affect the shipping platform. So we're going to continue to be a very robust platform with shipping, and many of you use us, and I thank you all very much for, for trusting the Postal Service. We, we have been here for several hundred years. We're going to be here for several more hundred years. So continue to use us. Uh, we will continue to give the services, and we're also going to continue with the enhancements. Our scanning has improved greatly. Our customers have told us how important it is scanning, tracking, and tracing is and how the features that we are designing that Giselle will talk about tomorrow are, are really taking a positive, uh, positive um, movement on people making a decision to stay with a postal service. So my last, my last slide, and I think I'm on schedule. Yeah, I am on schedule. <laughs> so my last slide, my summary slide is, uh, we at the US Postal Service have not given up on mail. Messaging uh, is absolutely critical to, to stimulate any economy. Uh, the Postal Service is, believes that we are well positioned not only for the future digital world uh, as, as we determine how the consumers want to use uh, digital messaging in the future, but clearly for today and for the foreseeable future, the mail, the advertising mail in particular, is going to be very vibrant. Our challenge is to continue to keep the rates as low as possible, which means we've got to keep our cost structure as low as possible. We got to keep that mail relevant and continue to come up with great ideas. And any great ideas you have, I'm more than willing to listen to. Keep those ideas relevant on how mail becomes relevant for people to use the mail, and ultimately to make it as simple as possible. It's got to be one click away. Everything is a one-click solution, and we're building all of our systems to make all of the mail products that we use, design, and 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 uh, support through our sponsors to make it simple. So. That's about it. I will now turn it back to Mr. Mudd, if that's okay. 